morning guys, GTP Angler Jason Reese here heading out of Hillsboro Inlet for a, uh, a little bit of a how-to on trolling in Southeast Florida today. So I get a lot of questions on, um, that's great you're catching fish and I'm picking up some tips, but show me everything from start to finish. So that's what today is gonna be about. So we're heading out of the inlet, the beautiful lighthouse that we're so proud of. Heading out today with JJ What's up? and Pat. Morning. Pat's a local, local fishing legend around here, so we'll get his in input today. And going out in the spread, on one outrigger is gonna be tuna taco. We're gonna run a four six planer on a pink and white sea witch. Critical that you guys use these big long shank hooks with a nice big ball bearing swivel. That's what allows the fish to hit the hook and stay connected without tearing into your mono. And that big ball bearing swivel you need for the fight. And we pulled a smaller hook straight last time I came back to the key, so it's critical to have these big hooks. On the shotgun, gonna be this uh, little squiddy combo going out back. I swapped out the DTX 220 for a DTX 400 minnow today because we had a couple of um, missed hits last time and I think with these treble hooks it's a little bit more deadly so we might wind up with a little bit of bycatch here because this bait is smaller but I've still caught 20 to 30 pound wahoo on these smaller ones so we're gonna give this a shot this morning and on the last outrigger we're gonna send out this Isla Marotta Flyers squiddy combo. So we're gonna head out just past like, we're gonna head out to like three to 400, but we're gonna start putting in, um, we're gonna start putting in lines just after we hit the, uh, the second reef here. So around like 70 feet, we'll troll out there. We got a beautiful morning and we're gonna try to go nail that first light Wahoo. We're uh, three days past the full moon. I've had better luck catching Wahoo in front of the full moon, but we had a lot of storms. We had a nice flat day out today. We're gonna make the most of it. Thanks for watching guys. So we're going to deploy our lines with the shotgun being the longest bait up to the last bait closest to the boat being the DTX minnow. So when you're putting the shotgun out, this is how much, this is how much we start with on, on the spool. And I'm going to dump about half of that spool out here off of the shotgun. By deploying the furthest away line to the closest to the boat lines and by staggering we can avoid a lot of the tangles. Alright guys, so here's how you rig up one of these bonita strips. So I'll do a small pilot hole for the wire. Make sure the barb does not go through. Put the wire in, cinch it down. Use your thumb to measure where the, where the hook's gonna go in. The hook through there, nice and easy. And it's nice and tight. And we bring this down. It's gonna create a nice profile over that bait going through. All right guys, I get a lot of questions on the actual uh, trolling equipment that I use out here. So. I do use uh, RD custom rods from, from Real Deal. Like, do we need custom rods? Probably not, but they built them based on the, um, the charter captain's best practices. And I figure the charter captains bring in a lot of amateurs, and so do I. So, what can we build that will uh, kind of hold up to uh, amateur hands? So that's why I bought these rods over a year now. They've been they've been great. So on the on the reels, I use all Abbots. So on the on the outriggers, I'm using these Abbott LXs. That's only 20 pound suffix fire mono. So I use three of those, right? So two on the outriggers. So on the outriggers, and then also on the shotgun. That's the smaller rods and the smaller wheels. And then for the planer rods, or some of you for the uh, running the deep lip lures, I'm using 30 wide Abbott Pro VEXWs. So those are also on a super thick rod and I tried to break it in the store with the, uh, the owner of the store. You can bend those things over and they do not break. So that's a 65 pound braid on those to 100 pound uh, leader on the planer. So um, that's what I'm running out here for, uh, for a five line spread. I find five lines is a good manageable number of lines for us to, to use while keeping, um, keeping a lot of different uh, spe species in play for us. So that's the equipment. Let me know if you have any questions. On the planer, this is 100 feet of 60 pound mono, and we've had two breakoffs on this this year, so I'm thinking about going back to 80 pound. Now, I've tried every single bridle out there on the market, and this one's my favorite. So, your leader attaches here, you got these small ball bearing swivels that you can wind on, they're nice and narrow, and all this is a 4 6 planer with cut off snap swivels that I'm going to drop into both sides. Like this. I'm going to deploy this onto about a 30 second count. And we're going about eight knots. 
your trolling speed's going to vary based on wind, current, waves, and all the conditions of that day. So it's never a one-size-fits-all. And the planar rod is usually the one that will dictate how fast you can go for the day, which is usually between six and nine knots. The hold of the, uh, the braid is the 65-pound braid, the rod and the rod holder. And now watch that rod tip. That's what it looks like when it's triggered. So to set it, I'm going to pull this in, the slack pull about waist high, and let it go. And now the rod tip is going to bend over. And I'm going to put the alarm on. And when this gets hit, the planer will pull straight, that rod tip pops up. So that's how you run a planer in your spread. And if you're running two planers, make sure your second one is a bigger, heavier planer, run closer to the boat, and you don't make tight turns. All right, so the planer's out now, and we're going to run this uh, DTX Minnow closest to the boat. So I'm going to deploy this one next. These tend to dig in pretty hard, so you got a good, good grip on the rod tip when you, do, when you deploy it. Make sure the alarm's turned off. I'm going to give this about a 15 second count. And lock that up. So now we've got our shotgun out, planer rod out, and our uh, closest to the boat, DTX Minnow, deep lip lure running out. So now we're gonna work on getting the, uh, the outriggers out, and we're all, we're all set with a full spread. All right guys, all five lines are out. The, um, the outriggers are out to that like six, seven little wake wave off of the engines. So as we make turns here, the planer's on 30 second count, the deep lip lure's on a 15 second count, so we don't mix things up as we go through. Uh, trolling two planers is a, a great way to catch fish out here in South Florida. It's also a way to get tangles if your captain is making tight turns, so keep that in mind. We have a good captain, I'm not worried about that. No offense, JJ. And what I want to get a point, uh, point across today is about running what I call a balanced spread. So that means that early morning out here, we want to catch a wahoo. We've got a planer and a deep lip lure. It's also early morning, there could be blackfin tuna in play, mahi in play, so we've got um, two top fish water baits and one off the shotgun, all those blackfin and wahoo killers. So we're out here open for business for anything biting. So this is like a nice way to go out here and put a lot of fish in play for the day. And as the day moves on, if they're finding one certain color, one certain bait, we'll continue to mix things up. All right, 414 feet of water. That's how the Hillsboro Inlet outrigger just got hammered. This is the uh, pink tuna taco. Oh, it's these fish out there. Slow, slow down, slow down. That thing bouncing everywhere. Little tuna. Little black fin, it looks like. I catch most fish in low light conditions. So, early morning like this, the best okay. time for me has been to catch wahoo, black fin tuna, mahi, you can kind of catch anytime. What you're looking for is early morning low light, evening low light, or storm, or big overcast low light. That tends to be where we catch most of our fish. Yeah, this spot produces blackfin for us. Tide changes also tend to produce bites, and my favorite is outgoing tide. So if you can get early morning, right from the full moon, outgoing tide, that's money. Yeah. Enough for an appetizer, though. I hope it's a blackfin, not a bonita. Usually it's blackfin in this area. That's a decent one. All right. If you have more than one person on the boat, get them cleaning while you're redeploying the line. The goal is to keep on fishing without making the deck slippery. Plus, it's way easier to clean the boat at the end of the day if it's not full of dried on blood. And you don't want a bunch of hooks, lures, trash, and stuff sitting around. So keep the deck clean. All right, so on the same Pink Tuna Taco outrigger, we are in 183 feet of water outside of Deerfield Beach. When we're fishing on the edge in like 100 to 300 feet of water, uh, what we do is kind of wind the boat up looking for different wrecks to troll over, and then we'll just make gentle S-curves along the way. What that does is it speeds the bait up in half the spread and slows it down in the other half, and the change in direction and the change in speed tends to draw more bites. It is? It's not. Oh, good. Still going about seven knots. It's good. No, no, Pat's, Pat's killing it. So 
So for these uh, surface and subsurface lures, I rig all these with a 50 pound ball bearing swivel to uh, like 5 to 10 feet of 80 pound mono or fluoro and a size 7 or 9 long shank hook. And even paired with only 20 pound mono on these smaller reels, we've got 25 pound mahi gaffers put in the boat with it, even a couple of big sailfish. So you don't need big tackle on these outrigger and shotgun lines to bring in good fish. Yes! Do you mark it? We should go back through there again. Yeah, we got, we got tracks. I saw those buildings I'm showing you. I think that one's going to be bigger. Alright, right there. Good job, Pat. Beautiful. It is 8.30. We've only had uh, two bites so far, both on the uh, outrigger uh, pink tuna tacos. we got two blackfoot in the boat. Zero Oahu bites so far. It's a little bit of a bummer, but we feel like our luck is about to change. When things get slow, get a little pilar into the body, the bite tends to pick up. All right, we are in 281 feet of water off of Boca, and that same shotgun just hit again. Oh, of course a shotgun. No, 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 sorry, it's not a shotgun. It's the, uh, it's the outrigger with that pink tuna taco. <laughs> JJ always gets the hard, the hard labor. I don't think it's a tuna. It looks, it looks longer. It might be a cuda. No, I think it's a cuda out of this depth. Actually, it's a cuda. <laughs> All right, hold it, hold it there. All right, guys, so 9.30, we didn't get any more bites and definitely no Wahoo bites. So we pulled the DTX minnow off and now we're running a size eight planer. So the same bridle system, the same amount of leader, the same hook, blue and white sea witch and squid combo on that one. So the uh, small one for sketch planer is on a 30 second count and you can see how that rod's bent over, not as much. And on this one, a size eight planer, so a, a bigger weight and a bigger plate on a 15 second cast, it's closer to the boat, pulling down. So when the boat turns, this one goes deeper and that one goes over. Kind of how your outrigger lines are staggered. And that should keep us, we're still mobile and we can make turns, but not as fast as we could, not as tight as we could with the DTX minnow. So a little bit slower. So we went from trolling about 10 knots down to trolling about seven and a half knots with the deeper planer now and we're heading out to deeper water. So it's getting warmer. Fish are gonna go down a little bit deeper. Hopefully get out and find some more, some more tuna, maybe some mahi. So we're gonna go out and keep our eyes open. A couple other things too, I didn't really narrate very good while we're catching fish. So if we catch a fish on this side of the boat, I'm gonna wait about 10 seconds to see if we get any more in that school. And afterwards, we're probably gonna slow down a little bit and I'm gonna turn into the fish and I'm gonna make a turn. So as we're bringing that fish in, we're lining up to come back up the same line that we just caught a fish on. So. It, it does two things. One is when you turn into the fish, you create some slack for the angler to pull line on, and you're also getting the boat back in position to make your next run through the same spot where you just caught some fish. So a um, couple, couple of points there. 10 seconds to keep going, which can be hard because you, you got a fish on, you want to get excited, slow down because you might catch more than one fish in that school, and then turn into the fish until it's in the boat, then we can pick up speed and troll right back through when you're already in. All right, 630 feet of water. And this is the other outrigger. So this is the uh, Islander. This is the Islander Ballyhoo. On the rip. On the rip that Pat was looking to help for. Slow down more. Mark, mark it, make a turn. You got it. So most of the subscribers that have been watching this for a while know that I go back and forth on whether I want Ballyhoo in the spread or not. So today, uh, Pat wanted to have uh, Ballyhoo in here. We switched to it. We got this connection shortly after. Um, some guys like to act around naked. We usually skirt them with like an Islander or something, something small to help it track better in the water. So a couple things about running Ballyhoo. Um, use the double hook only. When you get single hook Ballyhoo, they tend to take a lot of short strikes and they just you know, a big toothy fish whacks in the middle and, and leaves only the head with the hook in it. Um, I think mono gets more bites than wire, and I've had pretty good uh, hookup ratios, even on like kings and wahoo, on keeping them connected without biting through the mono. Make sure the back of the ballyhoo is flexible so they look uh, natural in the water. You don't want it being frozen and rigid out there. 
And um, a couple of the pros is that uh, most of our target fish that we're after out here eat ballyhoo. Mahi love them, big tuna hit them, and like I said, even even kings and uh, and wahoo. And they last a couple of hours on the line usually. I don't think quite as long as the Bonita strip has been treated well, but still a couple of hours is a decent for a bait out here. Hopefully they get bit before they wash out. Uh, some of the cons, um, there is bycatch. I mean that happens anyway with half the stuff we have in our spread. My biggest concern is you got to slow down a lot. So a lot of times I have to run slower to keep the ballyhoo looking natural, even like slower than with a, even slower than with like a size eight planer in the spread. Um, otherwise, they come like bouncing out of the water. Like some guys use like chin weights to help counteract that, so that's an option too. Uh, short strikes do occur even on a double hook, and you might not even notice them. Sometimes it'll happen so fast you might not hear it or it won't even pull it out of the outrigger clip. I mean, if you re reel it in an hour later and find out the tail's been bitten off and it looks unnatural out there. So you do have to check on these baits more than like some of the artificials that we uh, pull out here. So pros and cons, and like I said, I go back and forth. I've caught some great fish on Ballyhoo and I've also pulled them all day What everything else got bit and they, and they didn't. So a big matter of preference here. It's another, it's another big cuda, isn't it? I can't tell. Uh, it's big for a cuda. Oh geez, he's right. All right, I don't want to gap it if we're getting rid of it. All right, 633 feet off of Boca, and it's the uh, the same outrigger again with the ballyhoo. My man Pat was like, "Put some ballyhoo on today." I'm feeling the, I'm feeling the ballyhoo. I don't think it's on. Yeah, just the hooks. All right. 611 feet of water. We had a knockdown miss on the outrigger that peaked in a taco, and then something just hammered. The uh, we put a boon bird on the shotgun about half an hour, hour ago. With two little squiddy hooks. Something just drilled it. So not much left here on the spool. Or a mahi or tuna. Well, it jumped. It jumped. In the time. beginning, it jumped. Yeah, you so. didn't see if it was color or not. No, it was just. It definitely is not a uh, dolphin. There it is again. It just jumped again. It did look See his tail? Yeah. Long. It's hard to tell. It's long. It's either a cooter or a long. Silver or long. Well, right now we're going through a bit of a tide change, so that's what we're hoping for. Is they would turn the bite on here for us early afternoon. That was the end of our that was the end of our pink tuna taco out here that got bit off. That one's been producing a lot of bites today, in both of our blackfin. Mahi. Mahi, yes, right. it is. Gap or no gap? Let's see. Let's see. Let's get the gap ready just in case. I'll move my move my leg. Get the long gap ready. I think so. Yes, it's a mahi. But we gotta watch a lot of the lines, guys. Got it. I'll, 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 I'll move the lid on the side. Right. Yeah, it's a small. It's not really a. Not really a big gaffer, but I don't want to lose it. So. Definitely a keeper. Just put it behind the yes, ear. Yes, yes. Just swap them. No, 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 no. Swap them. Jay, um, towards, yeah, towards yeah. you and rake it. Yep, just like, just like that. Jay, let me help you out, Jay. Here. <laughs> let, let me help you out. Oh my God, am I really missing this? No, 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 no. Let, let, let me hit, let me get that for you, Jay. No, no, no. Let's get this all on camera. All right. First Woo mahi of the day. Mahi. Beauty. Nice. All right. Very nice. Do not use our sad gaff attempts there as a tutorial on how to gaff a fish. So ideally what you do is you have an angler kind of walk it back. Um, try to keep the fish's head under the water so it doesn't freak out if that's possible. And then using an overhand motion, take the gaff, hook down behind the leader, over the top of the fish, and just pull it back towards you. That's how you properly gaff a fish. Yep. All right, 216 feet of water outside of Boca. Came back in from 700 feet, and the deep number eight planer got hit. Pat's bringing it in. I see you, Jay. Oh. Gone. All right, 168 feet of water off a, right, off a Deerfield beach, and the shotgun just got leveled. Just 
follow me. Yeah, you yeah. got it. Hey, there's some rock. <laughs> yeah. It might like, be your wall hoop. <laughs> Yeah, you're good. Just, re just re reel, and when he's pull up, yeah, down. there you go. Yeah, this is, the, this is this is the time to pump him. So bring it up, and then just pull reel him on, on the way down. down without giving him any slack at all. Don't give him one inch of slack. We're barely moving forward. We're going one knot. Sure. Yeah. I'm looking at this as like a mile to go. <laughs> I mean, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> you tell, look at that. You took free school like last time. <laughs> he did say you were the next fish. Am I, am I wrong? He's got it. In 170 feet, it's where we were caught. We caught blackfin here earlier. Could be a big mahi, who knows? Pull up, reel down. And then use your thumb to guide it along so, it, so you put it on both sides. information here, Jay. You're okay. Good. You're doing you're doing perfect. Coming down. Yeah. Gotta be the shotgun. Always the shotgun. Get in the shade. <laughs> I'm gonna get in the shade. So if we're not out running and gunning, I find that my most productive trolling depth to be between 100 feet and 300, maybe to 400 feet. You already got a third of the spool back on him. He's coming up. Look at the yard. How many yards you got in there? Probably got about 200 more to go. I don't know if that, I don't know if that helps or hurts your morale. <laughs> Maybe a quarter of a mile. <laughs> you got a picture, like it's out there, like 200, 300 yards to start with, and no, something hammers it and goes down. You lose another 100 on it. You got 400 yards of line to get back in. So even though we weren't running and gunning, we were still looking for rips in the water, color changes, and birds. And we caught two of these fish, uh, finding the color change between the blue and the green water. So in the blue, in the blue water, I usually find more like black fin tuna, wahoo tuna prefer it, mahi. And in that green water, you find more like kingfish. But I've caught wahoo and sailfish in both color water. Did you put any more line out there? Well, here's the thing. Four lines went by that fish, and he didn't touch it at all. But the last one, way behind everything, way outside of the prop wash, that, that's what got hit. So the fact that we leave it way out there, I think, is indicative of why we get these bites. I don't want to rip it I know some people really feel strongly about the color of their lures, choosing darker colors based on light conditions. I tend to just lean into the pink and whites and the blue and whites mostly. Anything with like a mylar flash is always is always a bonus. And these boom, that boom bird has really been doing well for us the last couple months. I see it out there. See it? I mean, he had that thing, that bird, like buried for like five minutes. So decent fish. He's up on top now. Yeah, keep him up top. Keep reeling. Thanks, Pat. No, no. Here comes the thunder. Come on. No you pressure. got you got thunder, Molly crew. What else do you need? <laughs> Twenty one beers reaching through your system. <laughs> the stars have aligned. You want to try to run? This was a nice calm day for trolling. You can tell the waves are barely 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 to a foot. Um, I like to troll anywhere up to like one to three feet where the spread still pulls straight. Anything past, like approaching four feet or past that, it, it tends to get a little bit wonky, especially with planers. There's a lot of resistance to put on the, uh, on the tackle. The wind's gonna drive a lot of those conditions, and if it's blowing east or west, it's gonna be blowing fish closer or nearer to shore, changing where the blue-green line on the water is. When the wind blows north to south, it tends to push the fish a little bit deeper and turn the bite off. Some guys won't even go fishing on those days. They still say to fish when you can fish, you just might not get as many bites, so you gotta capitalize on them. Massive tuna. Please be a blackfin and not a bonita. Fish of the day. Good. 
A little higher. Okay, well, come a little closer, I'll get his tail. Come a little closer. <laughs> yeah, look at that, dude. Yeah, that's the best one of the day. Fish of the day on the shotgun way back there. That's what I'm talking about. Right. Yes. I'm excited to go. Way to go. If I wasn't ex like completely spent, I would have like <laughs> gave you a better high five on that. But I'm done. in the inlet we went uh, I think six fish caught on 15 bites so not a great hookup ratio but still brought four fish home three blackfin one mahi solid day on the water uh, definitely some highlights um, good guys out here on the water always a good day with JJ out here a new friend Pat my boy super fun day out here with these guys we, got, we looked out with the weather so we're supposed to get rain this afternoon turned out nice walk advisory goes into effect tonight so we made the most of our weather window and uh, for lessons learned, um, I think we learned that trolling two planers off of this boat requires like really watching how tight the turns are. We had one tangle, I'm not sure how much of it we filmed, but we took the planers up for a while. It took us like probably like five, ten minutes to undo it all. Um, I think that was probably it for lessons. But other than that, we switched half of the baits out throughout the day to kind of um, pick up some more bites where we weren't getting bites on certain lures. And we went everywhere from 100 out to like 700. And um, overall, pretty solid day. What about you, Jay? Amazing day. Brought in a bunch of fish, had a lot of bites. Uh, super happy to be with my crew. Always bring more beer. Always bring more beer. At 30 beers wasn't enough. <laughs> Pat, anything for you? Awesome day on the water. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. <laughs> so normally I tell you that we're gonna do a catch and cook, but we're trying to short these videos down and focus on lessons learned out there on the water. So hopefully you guys um, grab some uh, some tips from the uh, how to troll today. And uh, if you want to see more recipes and catch and cooks, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, we'll focus on the fishing. Thanks for watching, guys. And meanwhile, enjoy these other videos. Thank you.